Hi everyone. All right, so this is the piece that I had mentioned in, um, I think it was my last video uh, that I had picked up, wanted to um, repaint. This is just, this is metal. Um, I have gone through so much with this piece. It's driven me absolutely insane. And there are some really rough spots on it because I just got so sick of sanding it. Didn't realize when I bought this that apparently it was like baked on enamel type stuff on it. And so I sanded myself to death for two days, literally hours for two days. Gave up, went and got some acetone, soaked it in acetone, um, which got off the top layers of paint, but not the the underlying like whatever had been baked on and so I've got some really rough spots in it because I was just sort of at that point I was over it I didn't care I was going to paint it whatever it looked like so um, after all that and after you know all the you know, rinse the acetone off let it dry good um, I did coat it with this rust-oleum the gloss protective enamel uh, that it's this is just the white the gloss white and that's the only thing that I have put on it so we're gonna see How this goes because normally I Would not use an enamel But I I'm trying to remember what I used. I don't know. I used something on it initially I was just gonna paint over top of you know the paint that was already on it just and it's all white. Well, it just peeled up. It looked like I had put acetone on the paint. It, you know, it crinkles up and starts peeling off. Well, that's what happened. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of paint was on it, or I don't remember now what I put on it, but man, did that ever make a mess out of it. And that's the reason I ended up sanding it anyway. So y'all didn't need to know all that big long story. All right, so. I'm going with pastels on this because I'm not going to use a whole lot of alcohol, I don't think. Mostly just going to use alcohol uh, for blending when I need to. So I want to use some light colors. And so these are all Ranger colors. The Tim Holtz Ranger. I've got Salmon, Lemonade, Pink Sherbet, Aqua, Cool Perry, and Shell Pink. And now what I decided to do was to use um, two colors on each butterfly. I literally sat here for like 30 minutes just now trying to decide what colors I wanted to use and how I wanted to do this. Like whether to do each butterfly one color just to try and get a little of all colors on every butterfly. And, I don't know. This has been crazy. I'm still leaning. I, I'm having trouble. I'm still kind of want to put more than just two colors per butterfly. So, dang. I thought I'd made up my mind, and I don't know. All right, anyway, I will at times be using this. This is my Revlon brand styling brush hair dryer with the brush, brush attachment removed. This one has the cool setting, and that is what I will be using it on unless I need to dry up a little bit of moisture beads or uh, just need to dry a spot quickly, and then I'll flip it over to the warm setting for a little while. I also set out my little airbrush. This is just a little wireless or cordless um, airbrush that I actually got from solarcolordust.com. But the last time I was on their website, they didn't have these on there anymore. So I don't know um, if they will get them back in stock or not. And I have no idea what brand that this is. The only thing on it is something that says solarcolordust.com. That's a tongue twister for me for some reason. So, all right, let's get to work. Let's see what we're going to do. I may try a couple in the like just two colors and then if I don't like the way that's going I'll go back and add some more uh, this is 99% isopropyl alcohol and this is undiluted 
Jacquard Pinata Brass Metallic. <coughs> Excuse me, which is my very favorite one. <clears throat> Uh, as far as metallics go, this is uh, the only gold color that I generally use. I use Molotow Liquid Chrome for silver color, and then the Jacquard Pinata Brass for the gold color. One of these days, I'm going to get around to color coding my lids so I don't have to worry so much about getting them mixed up. You can just take a little dab of white acrylic paint and, uh, you know, just paint your lid white. And then after it dries, just put a drop of your color on it. Then you know what color you've got. Or you can be like me and risk getting them all mixed up and having to use a cotton swab with some alcohol to swab down inside the lid to see what the heck color it is. Now, these were bent up. They, you know, more like the butterflies sitting on a flower, but not with its wings closed all the way, but they were bent up some. I flattened them out what I could just to make it a little simpler uh, to keep the alcohol from, or the ink from running so quickly on it. And some of them would not flatten. You can see they're kind of welded to the, the metal circles underneath. And so, I, it's going to run, no matter what I do. So, let's just go for it. It's like I'm doing, like, nervous talking or something for some reason. And if you do something like this, you know, watch your edges. Just make sure that you get your, your ink all the way to the edges. This is kind of weird. I've never tried to do it on something this small before, so right, I'm hitting it with a little heat just because that kind of built up a little right there and I can see it moving. Um, now this, the Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel that I put on this is remove uh, sorry scratch that start over not this is not removable this is removable <laughs> if you put it on here i tested it on a spot on the back before i started to see if i would be able to take any ink off if i decided that i didn't like a color or and i think i don't i want to keep these white all these little swirly parts in behind so I'll be going back over that with just, you know, a little cotton swab with some alcohol and I'll just clean them, get any bits off that run onto it. Ooh, that really puddled. And I'm just kind of, I'm trying to think how to tell you how I'm doing this. Because I'm not trying to wisp it, because I'm going to want the whole piece, the whole butterfly covered, um, I'm just trying to keep it sort of confined so that I, and not let little fingers of ink run everywhere. And, uh, that's that's the only thing I'm really trying to do is just kind of spread it out a little bit but keep it fairly confined to a certain area spot something I don't know Is that my alcohol so far I haven't even used any alcohol with it and I may I may end up not.
Yeah, it was, and I was just testing a little spot right there that was still wet. See, it really, I was afraid that was going to be a little too concentrated, but I wanted to try. I do think you could do this, though, with an airbrush. Uh, I just, that spot had already started drying a touch on top, so I had to do it a little more, a little closer to it than I, I would have preferred. Whoa. Not... Not really what I wanted to happen, but I'll try. Alright, so this is a little tricky because the other butterflies are getting in the way. See that one? I can't get my hair dryer where I need it. And that's something I didn't think about, was having trouble getting the dryer to where I needed it. All right, so that was Cool Perry, for any of you who are wondering. And I've got that where you all can see it good enough. My table is pretty messy at the moment. I need to clean it up. I'm running out of room to put things down to paint on because I've got too many inks and tape and paint and I, I, all kinds of things. This is the Shell Pink. This right here, I'm going to use a little alcohol. I just put a two drops, literally two drops of alcohol on that. Because I didn't want to put so much on it that it just washed it down and off which is something you got to watch for if you're working on a, a an angled material. catch that before it got down into the cool Perry too much. And have something like this handy. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, the back end of a paintbrush will work. Because this is going to dry up on you much more quickly than what you're going to be used to. Uh, you're not using alcohol in it for, you know, to help keep it liquid and moving. So it will dry up much more quickly. And this one's going to go probably where I don't want it to. Luckily, there's not too, too many of them that were as, ooh, put that on hot. That may be one reason it was drying up fast. Um, anyway, luckily, there's not too, too many of them that, you know, are standing up as much as this one. I was able to get the other ones down just a little bit more. And this is where I'm just trying to get 
uh, coverage in a spot that maybe the ink just would not flow over just due to the roughness. So I've got like no gold down there and that's bothering me. So I'm just going to put a drop of brass and nothing else and see what. Mm, I don't like that. Alcohol though. I'm gonna be softening that up a little anyway. I got the edges a little harder than I wanted. I don't really have the blend on these that I want, but I think I'm going to leave it. Um, I was hoping to have a better blend, but on these, on this angle like that, I'm just going to end up making a big mess, I think, if I try to do too much to it. This one's probably going to run good. I'm trying to just spread it out with a tip. I mean, a little bit more is coming out, but I'm mostly trying to spread it with the tip. can kind of see what that one looks like. Sorry, the lighting is just really hard for me to show you all this stuff. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that, with that one. So I think I am going to go on and stick with the two color theme for right now. Um, yeah. So I'll move on to the next duo because I went ahead and sorted out which ones I want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And then after that, I think I'm going to speed this up because it is seriously going to be the same procedure over and over for, you know, all of these. Uh, I debated on whether or not to paint their little antennas brass or gold. Um, I'd just take a paintbrush and use my brass and if I wanted to do that, but I think I'm gonna leave them white because I, I'll decide for sure once I get done, but I'm, I'm leaning towards white. Um, yeah, sorry y'all, brain dead today. Let's do, all right, so this is lemonade and salmon. Give these a shot. Next. I'll go with the lemonade first. Some limonada. The girls are learning a few words in Spanish. So they love to go in a restaurant and order limonada. This is a lot harder than I expected. 
expected to get the air from the dryer to blow on it. It's just such odd angles that it's like it doesn't want to. I mean, it doesn't want to move it for some reason. It can't get to where it needs to be. So those of you who have an airbrush, you might do better, um, you know, trying your airbrush with it. a little white spot right there trying to cover it up There was a little raised lip right there on the edge of that, and I just could not get the brass to go, or the ink to go over there. So I may end up having to go back around a couple of these edges. I see a spot there on that one now that did the same thing, just at the very edge. So I'll just take this and put a tiny, you know, just, I mean, touch the ink to it or some brass to it and get whatever white spots there on the edge that's lift and it'll be fine. If you're using something like this, make sure you clean it a little in between colors. Uh, kind of hard to remember sometimes when you're in the middle of painting, but you'll be much happier if you do. trying to decide whether to put any more of the lemonade color on there, but I think I'll just go ahead and go for the salmon. that the salmon and the uh, whatever it is, shell pink, yeah, salmon and the shell pink might be a little too close in color, but they uh, seem to be okay right now.
having a little trouble getting it to show up dark enough and to move where I need it though. Okay, so if after you get done with the spot, you notice, so I saw one of those, but I decided to leave it so that I could, and now I see a couple more, but show you what I'm talking about. I think I'll just use the brass. Now, not necessarily over top of your thing. Uh, <laughs> let me find something. Just a little paper cup here. I'm just gonna put just a drop of brass on this. And then I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the sharp end, but you can use either end or whatever. I actually I'm gonna use the other one because that's not working. So even the back end of a paintbrush will work. I've used that before. And then just kind of dab your spot where you need it to go. And then just leave it. Just fill it in and leave it alone. And you'll notice, as you do, if you'll, you know, just dab it on there and leave it, you'll notice that that brass will generally float to the top pretty good in those areas. I just missed all kinds of stuff through there. Now this is normally, I'll do this at the end once I get done with the painting, but I did want to show that to you all before I start speeding it up here. <clears throat> Trying to think if there was any other little tips or advice or anything to give you on this. But not really. Play around with it. And try not to do that. Yuck. Which, if you all didn't see that, I dripped a big blob of brass on the yellow where I was already done. Which meant I had to go back over it again. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm getting in too big of a hurry. I know that my last several videos have just been so long because I'm trying to explain things so much as I go. And so that's why I really wanted to try to make this one a little bit shorter. And I know... Y'all, some of y'all are just so sweet, and you tell me how much you don't mind, however long the videos are. But I know that it's annoying, and I know that y'all don't want to see every single tiny little thing that I do a lot of times. You just want to see, like, the first few minutes of how I do it, 
and then you know maybe the very end what it looks like when I get done so uh, I know there are some of y'all that watch the whole videos but for the most part sorry I got a fuzz on there I was trying to get off um, for the most part the vi my videos average about nine minutes of view time so that's even the ones that are um, an hour long or even over an hour no matter the length of the video that's what's really funny to me no matter the length of the video the average view time is about nine minutes <laughs> it's kind of funny so um, I could have a 20 minute video and you know compared to an hour and 20 minute video and both of them are gonna have average view times of somewhere right around nine to nine and a half minutes so all right um, I am going to go ahead and speed this up I don't really see any reason to you know keep y'all hanging around for this part because it's gonna be repetitious just doing the same things, just with different colors here and there. So, um, I will speed this up, and then uh, we'll see what it's going to end up looking like in the end. First, let me apologize to those of you who wanted to see this slower. Um, when I got, I knew it was going to take a while to get this done, uh, but once I got all of the little <laughs> bits and pieces of video that uh, I had to stitch together, once I got it all together and realized it was going to be about two and a half hours worth of video, I decided it needed to be sped up quite a bit because I don't think any of you want to sit through that amount of time of just watching me do this same basic thing over and over again. So that's... That's the reason that this video is sped up. Uh, I and this first faster part, uh, I did. I didn't speed it up tremendously. I mean, I did speed it up some, but as it goes on, you know, in the video, I did speed it up more and more. Uh, I did leave this first part a little bit slower, just so you could get you know a little bit better idea of exactly what I'm doing without it moving quite so quickly. Now, there were, I, I started to just put this to music and, and let you all watch it, but there were a couple of things that I wanted to mention, so I did decide to go ahead and do a voiceover on this part of it here. Now, I, I mean, I've had some questions about what materials you can use alcohol inks on. So, obviously, you can use them on metal because this is what I'm using it on. You can use it on glass. Uh, I do have uh, a video, I think, maybe only one. I'm not even sure, maybe two, uh, of using it on glass. And I will try and do some more of those sometime soon. But you can actually do it on any non-porous surface. It's got to be something non-porous, waterproof type surface. It doesn't matter what it is. The smoother it is, the better it's going to look. You know, pr preferably something just absolutely smooth like glass. This was very tricky because it wasn't absolute, absolutely smooth. I think I explained in the beginning for this video about the uh, how rough part of it was and bumpy and it it was really difficult to get the inks to move over those parts at times which is the reason you see me with my little blending tool thing just kind of dabbing the ink here and there trying to get it to go into some of those little bumps and I don't know what to even call them <laughs> so um anyway uh, that's uh, something to keep in mind. The smoother your surface, the better. Now, for a non-porous surface, I mean, for a porous surface, such as wood, something that's going to absorb the ink, 
you can actually treat it with something. You can seal it with something. Uh, you can, if you don't care about the color, I mean, you can spray paint it with, like I used here, this gloss enamel that I used, which worked really well. I would have been able to wispy this if I wanted to. So, uh, if well, if it had been a flat surface, I would have tried to get it a little more wispy had I not had ink just sort of flowing all over the place because these were, you know, tilted a little bit and just really hard to get the ink to stay exactly where I wanted it to. But anyway, back to stuff like wood. So if you want, if you don't care what the color is, if you don't want to keep the wood grain, let me put it that way, then you can seal it with you know, some sort of paint, enamel. It's got to be something waterproof, uh, a sealant waterproofing type paint so that your alcohol and inks don't absorb into that paint because they can in certain paints. Now, if you want to keep your wood grain, I, I have not tried a clear enamel to do this on. Um, that might work since this type of enamel worked. So, I would say possibly a good clear enamel or uh, resin. This will work on resin because I have, I have inked on top of resin before. So, you can just put a, a thin layer of resin over your wood. Let it, it needs to be cured. Let it cure good before you start trying to ink on it. And... Uh, but once it's cured, then you can do your your alcohol ink painting on top of that, and you'll still have that, that wood grain look uh, underneath, which would be really pretty, I'm sure. So, uh, as you probably could see, what well, I think I told you what my original plan was to just uh, do. I was going to alternate, but, you know, two colors on each butterfly, had 13 butterflies on it, so, you know, was going to have four butterflies with each color combo, and then one extra that, you know, I would have chosen at the end for whichever color combo would fit in there the best and not be right next to the same thing. So, I, as I was starting, I changed my mind on that, decided to really mix up my colors and I had just a couple already that matched with the same color combos. But after that, I went through and tried to do a different or at least fairly different color combo for each butterfly, which I think turned out a lot better. I was, I was happy with that. One thing that I keep in mind when you're doing something like this and, and I do believe I mentioned this, but it was really, really tricky to keep my inks from just running all over each other because these were angled and sloped a little bit. It was very tricky. And so if you're going to do this, don't get frustrated, but be prepared to go quickly with your air source but be real careful not to, you know, hold your dryer or whatever you're using over there as you're putting stuff down. You're going to splatter it all over everything. But do be prepared to get the air on it quickly. I had a time or two where I was struggling because I, you know, would pick up my dryer so fast and, fl and flip it on that I was hitting putting it on heat instead of cool, and so the ink was drying too quickly. But this was a lot of fun to do. I mean, I, I really did enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's always fun to work on something different. I love doing the painting on Yupo or, you know, whatever type of synthetic art paper, but it's always fun to just decorate something, uh, especially when you're doing it as sort of a gift, because this, as I said, I think, I'm hoping will go in our uh, granddaughter-to-be's room once she's born. And this, you know, it matches her room really, really, really good. So, 
Uh, that hopefully will be going in there along with another piece. I don't know if I want to say painting because this, the background of it's going to be sort of like these butterflies. It's not going to be a wispy. It's going to be just blended colors uh, with her name in wooden letters put over top of that background. So I'm looking forward to getting started on that. Uh, I don't know if I'll do a video on that or not. I might and just do it sort of a sped up version like I did here, just for any of you all who happen to to want to see it, but it'll be basically the same techniques that I've used here on this one. Not going to be doing any wispy edges on it. I just want the, the background done in alcohol inks. Uh, that's really all I can think of right at the moment to tell you all uh, about how I did this. So, um, I will have to seal it. I have not gotten that far on it yet, but uh, I will seal it exactly like I would an alcohol ink painting. I'll just, you know, put a few coats of the Camar varnish on it and then a few coats of the UV protectant just to help keep those inks from fading quite so quickly and so that they don't, can't get scratched and damaged and rubbed off because if you've messed around with your inks any you'll know that they can get rubbed off fairly easily uh, if they're not sealed you can take your finger and smudge it a little bit or if a fingernail will definitely scratch it so um well that's just about it for the voiceover part of this the uh i'm you know this is the last butterfly here i think that i had to put some ink on, so I will be rejoining you very shortly uh, from my workstation. <laughs> Well, I'm really happy with it. That was a lot trickier than I even realized it was going to be. I knew it was going to be tricky just because you've got slopes and hills and valleys. But, uh, yeah, it was, there were times when I couldn't get the hair dryer to get the air to go where I needed it to go, which made it even trickier. But I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. I hope that you all can see just how pretty it is so um anyway so you know keep stuff like this in mind if you happen to be at the thrift store or just wherever dollar store yard sale garage sale um you know and you see something that's metal it unless it's just all rusty which you actually could fix too if you want to take the time to sand it down but, I mean, you can turn it into pretty much anything you want. So, there you go. I'm wondering how this will look on a baby girl's wall. Hmm. My poor granddaughter-to-be is going to have her wall completely covered with the things that I make for. Along with my grandson, who is her brother, or brother-to-be. So, and of course, Maddie and Zoe, the two granddaughters that live with us, they are, they constantly, they see what I'm doing. So they're always going, oh, can I have that one? <laughs> so, all right, well, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I know there wasn't a whole lot to learn in here today, but, you know, hopefully a little bit. Oh, um, I think that I mentioned this a little earlier, maybe not. Anyway. Um, I now have some merchandise on sale or for sale on YouTube. If you go to my channel's homepage, uh, there's a little uh, tab now that says store. And it's just a few, some of the paintings that I've done that have been printed onto t-shirts or hoodies or um, 
tumblers or things like that. And there's even a couple of bath towels on there. Or not bath towels, beach towels on there. Uh, phone cases, a few different things. And I'll just periodically be adding things to it. So, uh, you know, give it a give it a check out. See if you see anything you like. Some of the stuff is only available in the U.S., but most of it is available in the U.S. and Europe. And most of the shirts, uh, whether t-shirts or hoodies, go up to a 4X, I believe. So, uh, anyway, check it out. See if you see anything you like. It's another way that you all can support me. And I will switch this. I'm going to, before I'm done done with this, I'm not going to show you all this part but I will go back around these edges that I didn't get as I was painting and because I can see you know just a white spot or two here and there and I'll touch those up and then I'll go in with a um, just a little cotton swab and I don't know if you all can see it or not but like there's some little places where I dripped uh, a little bit of ink or every once in a while I would hit it with the air and it would splatter but most of the splatter actually went on to another butterfly, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But, you know, there's a couple of little spots up under where you know, it dripped just a tiny bit. And I'll get all that cleaned off after I get the edges touched up. And then I'll be, oops, once it's dry good, the metallic's still sticky, but I'll be going back through and, you know, kind of giving them a little bend up the way that uh, the way that they were supposed to be the way they were when I bought it so all right well the pictures at the end here will be after I've touched it up and done the bending and all that so uh, hang around and take a look at the the uh, totally finished pictures and I'll be back with y'all soon I love y'all bye